everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you with me today. We are going to be doing something interesting. Um, a few weeks ago, a author reached out to me and asked if I would be willing in exchange for a free copy of her paperback novel that was coming out, if I would be interested in doing a book review for her. And they, the author sent me a packet of information about the book and kind of a sample of the writing and everything like that because that was very well professionally done. And also I wanted to make sure that I was interested in what she had written because I didn't want to review a book that wouldn't normally be in my wheelhouse because that's not fair to the author. But this was a crime with uh, romantic elements to it, which I mean, I've read plenty of true crime. I've read plenty of mystery, suspense, crime, whodunit, mystery, murder mystery, cozy mysteries, just a lot of mystery. So um, I definitely read things like it. So today we are going to be doing the book review of this novel called Callahan by Anita Wright. And we can just see it right there. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to do some structure to this book review because I didn't want to just be sitting here talking about what, you know, that I liked it, that I didn't like it, you know, it wasn't for me, but I, or it was for me, and why that was. So I've kind of got myself organized a little bit. And one of the first things we're going to do is as we always do with book reviews, let's read the back cover and let's talk about the author briefly. So this is the back cover. When Nick Moran, sheriff and divorced father of two, answers a call from emergency dispatch regarding a burning house, he discovers that the fire is an act of arson and the evidence uncovered in the debris already has the United States government's interest. Before Nick has the chance to decide what this means for his citizens, government agent Michelin Stone is sent to investigate. She informs Nick that his evidence has ties to a criminal organization which has intentions of setting up its operation in Callahan, a town with limited law enforcement. What begins as an isolated incident becomes an entanglement of love, greed, and corruption with questionable government involvement. Who can be trusted? In all of his years as sheriff, Nick has provided himself on working within the boundaries of the law. But when his work causes unwarranted attention, Nick has to go outside the law to protect his town and the people he loves. Callahan. Now this is by Anita Wright. And I did a little in research on her on Goodreads. There seems to be a couple of titles that are attached to her name and then there's this one, which I think has been published in one other version in addition to this particular cover. Um, the About the author says that she's um, written other romance novels and that has, she has recently decided to combine romance with elements of true crime or elements of crime fiction and that this is the debut book in that mixed genre. So first, let's talk about the aesthetics of the book because you all know me. This book unfortunately doesn't have much of a smell. Sad for me, but <laughs> she also doesn't have a bad smell, so that's good. <laughs> um, this is a soft back paperback with a bit of a texture, which is nice. It seems it's pretty well put together. The cover is is nice. It's got some pretty good stylistic elements going for it. There was nothing off-putting that I found about it. The font's simple. The back cover, unfortunately, the text is blurry, which means that the DPI of the cover file wasn't quite as high resolution as the images on the front. That can happen sometimes in small press. It can also happen when you're trying to self-publish. It's just one of those things um, because it can actually can bleed and look a little textured, unfortunately. But the inside, all of the the copy is good, there was no printing errors, nothing like that. So all in all, aesthetically, not bad. I'd give it probably a three out of five. So good, okay. So let's talk about the writing. Um, I've had some problems with this one and a lot of them are, I think, probably more, you know, first starting out novice kind of issues that you find sometimes. Um, I was very lucky early on when I was writing that I ran into some very firm, <laughs> editors, but also some what I consider some good ones. And they taught me a lot. I learned a lot early. Um, and this book is it mostly it's technically good, which means the author has a good grasp on grammar. There's not anything that make, really will call you out in just sort of her common usage. There was some stilted dialogue wherein the people weren't quite being as natural as I would normally like to see conversations flow in a book. Um, there was also some point of view hopping or POV hopping. This happens when it's it's a pretty common thing. Um, normally it's caught on the editing floor. I've definitely done it before, but you tend to write in third person limited or first person. Yes, so first person uses the I pronoun, I, me, etc. 
third person limited is one character's point of view and you use the he, she, they pronouns. Um, in this book, um, we were in Nick's point of view for the entirety of the novel, but occasionally the author would slip and you would get a point of view that you had that the main character would not have known. For example, instead of saying the other character, Michelin, Michelin seemed upset or she seemed like she wasn't having a good time instead of something like that, because obviously Nick could have surmised that from her body language and her tone and that sort of thing. Instead of saying that, it was Michelin was very uncomfortable and knew she should share more with Nick, but didn't think that the time was right. That's information that Nick wouldn't know unless he happened to be psychic. Now, again, that's completely possible, but um, probably needs to be established up front just like it's completely possible to write in third person omniscient, which you get many different characters' points of view. Uh, Stephen King famously does this. He writes in animals and killers and main characters and everything else point of view. So um, it's completely possible, but you need to establish it early and you don't need to jump around in those points of view as you're writing the story because it tends to kind of come across like the author has temporarily forgotten whose voice that they're in which can bring the reader out of the story and make it a little more difficult to follow along and enjoy it. Also, I found that this author sometimes favored adjectives and adverbs that killed the prose. Um, this is, again, very common. Um, especially, I find, if you are going from the romance genre wherein there's a certain style and a sort of set of things and the way you describe things and that sort of thing, because you're trying to be, you know, dramatic, sexy, involved, and that kind of thing. Whereas you're going from that to this book, where you're writing from a male's point of view, and he's this kind of hardened small town sheriff who's been burned and that sort of thing and has issues with family and that kind of stuff. And so occasionally I would find that his inner monologue didn't match the character establishment that the author had set up for him. For example, he would think of Michelin and her alluring face. I, uh, I did a bit of a dude poll on this one. I, I find that most of my guy friends have never thought of a woman's face as alluring. <laughs> Not to say that some guys couldn't, but typically if you're that kind of poetic person, then perhaps it was established early on. Whereas the adjectives and adverbs that sometimes the author would use when describing the internal headspace of her main character didn't match up with all of the other established facts that she had given him and painted his character with. Because characters are, of course, nothing but an aggregate of how an author describes their movement, describes their way of dress, describes their way of speaking, describes their tone, and all of that. And so all of those things add up to a character, because obviously we're not seeing a person. You can't see how they move. So it's a way that you describe their movement and a way that you choose to describe how they speak. Does the person speak very casually? Do they have dialect? Are they, are, are they very formal? And Nick isn't the kind of guy to say alluring. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just one example. There were several others, but it would just take me out of the story and I found it distracting. And so and one of the things that I do when I'm actually editing or babying for other people is I do say things like make sure that you don't overuse words and adverbs and things like that that you may not need. Um, because the problem is that, of course, it interjects the author into the story as opposed to the reader being able to stay with the character and stay with the flow and not get interrupted and that sort of thing. So... Uh, another problem I have with the writing is there was a lot of telling in this novel instead of showing. Again, this is kind of a, another thing that you find in, in authors who are just starting out. Um, and also in some very established ones. I've, I have read some books that have so much telling in an author and this book is, these people have written 14,000 books or something. And so it comes up again, but it's just, again, it's a, it's something to watch out for that I find. There's, there's a difference and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to read you an example of what I mean of tell versus show because it's something that I think you hear about, but not necessarily, but hearing the difference I think will, will help illustrate the point. So it's this simple. Jane felt pain in her temples. Her head hurt because she'd been thinking all night about a complex problem. That's telling. This is showing. Jane shoved herself away from the desk. Her stomach rumbled and the clock had to be lying to her. No way was it tomorrow already. She clutched at her head on her way to the kitchen to find some aspirin. Showing. So that tells you that she's been doing this for a long time. It's obviously she's got a headache. She's been staring and studying and yeah, all this. And the complex problem should have probably been established before the scene and then while she's still trying to figure it out after she has her aspirin. So that's tell versus show. There was a lot of telling in this novel. There was a lot of telling me how characters felt. There was a lot of telling me 
what they thought. There was a lot of telling me how they came to their conclusions and that sort of thing. And obviously in a crime novel, some of that is necessary, but some of it isn't. And I find that the parts that particularly are not are the ones that are embedded in character interaction and again, in internal thought patterns and that kind of thing. So there's a way to tell less and show more. And it was just something that I really kind of wished that I had seen more in this novel. And then finally, with some of the writing, there were, uh, I mean, there were more typos and perhaps grammar mistakes and that kind of thing. Not necessarily grammar mistakes, but um, slips in punctuation that were more than typos, but less than an obvious um, ignorance to a particular grammar rule. Again, would have been cleaned up, I feel, with a good editing pass from somebody who, who knew what they were looking for, particularly if they're working with an author who is first to start out. Now again, I say all this just based on my internet search here, but as far as I can tell, there may have been one or two novels before this one. And then this is the first foray into this cross-genre um, kind of storyline. All that to say, the writing style wasn't one that I particularly enjoyed because there were just a lot of things that make it difficult for me to stay in the story and stay invested and interested in the characters. So that probably only got about a two out of five for me. <laughs> so, and moving on, I wanna talk now about the characterization and the actual way she structured the people in her story. And unfortunately, this is, this is where I, I run out of a lot of, um, I didn't like many of the characters. I didn't like any of the characters. <laughs> Um, they didn't gel with me. Um, I found that the sheriff was a bit of a misogynist. Uh, that wasn't very pleasing for me. I, but that's because I do not enjoy the I am man, hear me roar, bang head over, bang club over woman head, drag off to cave kind of mentality. And I found some of that in the sheriff. And that, again, I don't read romance novels like that. They don't appeal to me. And it didn't appeal to me in this particular instance either. Michelin I found very confusing and again some of this is because we're looking at her through Nick's point of view so she was by turn kind of this stern cop and then this kind of um unintentional sex kitten and then this wide-eyed innocent and it was it was messy I I didn't enjoy Michelin I couldn't find anything really to gel with her I couldn't find anything that I really found emotionally invested in or ways to become emotionally invested in them unfortunately um, I didn't find any emotional connection between them at all. Um, and that was difficult because they're supposed to, at some point in the novel, probably fairly early on, kind of a hate you at first and then fall in love kind of situation. And it wasn't unfortunately believable for me. I also found that there were a lot of characters in this novel that didn't carry the story any farther. Uh, that's one of the things that they, again, an editor, a content editor will tell you about is you generally want most of your characters to carry a plot point forward. You need them for some reason, they need to be there, they're illustrating a point, they're showing off a plot piece, etc. So there were a lot of characters that didn't quite do that. So characters, it's a zero out of five for me. I, I couldn't find anything that really made me want to stick with them or made me found them very interesting or made me, made me want to know more about their lives. Um, and finally, that takes me to plot. Um, this book had a hard time trying to figure out whether or not it was a romance or a crime novel, again understandable. This is the first time we're going into this, this cross-genre thing um, where the author is trying it out. I, I found the romance elements distracting. I found the crime portions kind of mundane and pedantic. I didn't really... It was very much this happened and then this happened and then this and it was just kind of... And then a lot of the conclusions that the characters would jump to in order to help solve the crime, I couldn't quite follow. Their intuitive leaps weren't I mean, maybe I just miss them, um, which is completely possible, but there were just a lot of intuitive leaps and things that they kind of pieced together that I couldn't understand how in the world someone short of, say, Sherlock Holmes pieced all of that together in the way that they did. So a lot of that seemed to have gaps for me. Um, I found the plot very convoluted because of that. Uh, there was a lot of mixed messages, a lot of blurred lines, a lot of lines that I couldn't quite understand why they were all trying to pull together and what kind of picture they were going to show. Um, while I don't really want to talk about any of the particular crime portion of it, because obviously that would get into major spoilers, I can tell you when I say convoluted, there was a sex scene in this novel um, and it was written in such unusual sentence structure that I actually completely missed it. 
And it wasn't until several chapters later, when of course the characters are talking about their night of passion, that I realized that they had sex. And I, I literally had to go back and try to figure out when that happened. <laughs> because it wasn't obvious. Um, so that, that was a bit difficult for me. I, I didn't like much of the pacing of this novel or the plot. I found the crime pacing at times slow, too slow, kind of tedious, filled when then filled in the blanks there with lots of what I would consider non-critical action. And then there were other times when, again, they were making such fast intuitive leaps and such great jumps and leaps and bounds and that sort of thing that it, it didn't seem plausible. There was too much of the wrong kind of detail, in other words. So plots a no for me as well, unfortunately, because again, and this is about counterfeit money and it's about um, some other sort of intrigue that goes along that they find out about different things. You know, there's obviously there's an act of arson and, and that kind of stuff. But again, even if the actual thought processes there were a very interesting sort of crime unfolding in this town, the way it was put together didn't hold my interest. In fact, I did a lot of skimming in portions that I probably shouldn't have. I found when you're writing a novel, you want to peak about three quarters of the way in, right? You want to bring people in, get them hooked, and oh my gosh, they can't stop reading and they can't stop reading and they can't stop reading. Oh, we finally figured it out and now we're done, right? You want to peak in your interest level about halfway to three quarters of the way through, right? You don't want to peak too early because then you're going to lose your audience a quarter of the way through. This novel peaked at about page 60. So for me, so I, um, uh, I wasn't really drawn in, I think is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, as I always say with my reviews, um, my experience was mine and yours may vary. So this book could make complete sense to you. You could find it very interesting. Uh, you could think that counterfeit and that sort of thing and government agencies and what they were involved with and what they were doing and the machinations they're in to be fascinating. Um, you might not mind the way that the character portray is portrayed in his interactions with women. And you may find Michelin more believable because you have experience that makes her more emotionally connectable for you. For me, it was a no. I'd give the whole book about maybe one and a half out of five. So for me, this was not one that I would necessarily recommend uh, to anybody. I'm grateful for the chance to have read it. I'm very thankful to Anita Wright for sending me a copy of her book. Thank you. And I wish her all the best in writing more and growing and figuring out her voice and what she wants to say. So all that said, thank you, Anita, for the opportunity. Thank you for watching me and this review. I hope it was informative. I really tried to err on the side of critique as opposed to just trying to tell you, oh, I didn't like this book, but I wanted to actually be able to explain why. And also maybe to cover some things that I had learned in my journey on writing that may be useful to anyone out there who's watching this and thinking, well, I want to write a crime romance novel. And well, and for whatever reason, you might be listening to my advice. And I'm not really sure why. <laughs> because writing is so subjective, as you know, and so is book reviewing. So if you read this book and you like it, please let me know. Just write down in the comments. Um, just tell me what you think. And if you've read other things by this author that you think are better, absolutely, please let me know. And as for doing more book reviews in the future, um, I'm always open to the idea. So I'll leave some information in the description box down below for you. And you can always check me out on my Patreon. And hopefully I'll be seeing you more often in videos uh, in 2020. 2019 was a little hectic and crazy. And from what I can tell, it was hectic and crazy for most of us. It was just a very interesting, that's a kind word here. Anyway, but I'm back, at least for right now, with a new backdrop and a new room, also a new haircut, and uh, hopefully some more videos in the future. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to the readers. Thank you to the authors. And for the love of story, I will see you next time on my channel.